I'm Bailey. I'm Allie. And we're all going to speak a little bit louder for the camera. Thank you. Our mechanism is the warm and wheel. It works at a 90 degree angle. The gear ratio is 24 to 1. Both the input and output is rotary. A worm is used to reduce speed and increase torque. The flow of power is not reversible. A gear cannot drive a worm. Hi, I'm Nick. I'm Carly. I'm Devin. I'm Harley. <laughs> this is our bevel gear assembly. It um, it's it's used for uh to change direction in a drive or to, <clears throat> a driving gear system by 90 degrees. Uh, car differential and um, <clears throat> shaft driven bicycle. You can find it. You can find one in a um, hand drill. It's used for the main mechanism. The input motion is rotary and the output motion is rotary as well. The power is not, or the flow of power is not reversible. Uh, the direction of the power is reversible. Um, the torque, or the torque is uh, decreased and the acceleration is increased. Okay, anything else? My name is Dawn. My name is Keith. And our mechanism is the bevel gear. The bevel gear rotates at a 90 degree angle, and the gear ratio is a one to one because they are both the same size. The speed and torque stay the same. The, be the bevel gear is used in many different applications, like automobiles, marine application, uh, different types of power plants and steel plants, helicopters, and even the egg beater. With the bevel gear, its direction can be reversed. It can go to the left or to the right. Also, the flow of power can be reversed. You can take the motor and it's just on the other axle. Anything else? Excellent. Nice job, guys. My name is Chan. I'm Zach. Uh, I'm Xavier. And I'm Mike. Our mechanism is the rocking pinion. Um, it is used to change or in cars and trucks the steer. The pinion right here is connected to the steering wheel and the linear motion is connected to the tire rod and it may right there and then the pinion and then the rack it helps the car steer. Um the input motion is rotary, which is the gear making um, move back and forth. The output of this, the output motion is linear. This is moving side to side, which makes it linear. Um, the flow, the reversible, uh, is the flow is reversible because you can move the uh, the pinion back and forth. And so. And the direction of the um, uh, the direction is reversible because you can move the, pit, the rack back and forth. The torque and the acceleration is, can neither be increased or better torque. Uh, even if you put a bigger gear on there, it would be faster. And yeah. All right. Is that it? Excellent. I'm Connor. I'm Darlene. I'm Moana. And this is our mechanism, and it's the worm and wheel. Some of the examples in real life are used in elevators, big trucks, heavy machinery, homes, and tuning all string instruments. For example, I have my guitar here. This would be the motor right here, which turns the worm, and then the wheel is what turns this. So when I turn this. The input motion is rotary, which is caused by the motor making the worm um, spin in a circular motion. And um, the worm causes this, the wheel, to turn in a circular motion too, which is um, the rotary of that wheel. The flow, I mean the direction of power is reversible, but the flow direction is not which means the worm can turn the wheel, but the wheel can't turn the worm. Um, our mechanism is torque, and it's increased, and the acceleration is decreased, and it's a small to big gear ratio, and the worm uh, spins, rotates,
takes more time than the wheel because it's smaller and this is bigger so it uh, rotates less times. Anything else? All right, very nice. Thank you. I'm Marcus. Um, this is our mechanism. Uh, mechanism. It's called a lead screw. And what it's used for in real life, it's used for like um, jacks or there you can find them in a CD drive um, to open and close it. Uh, uh, um, so, so what this is, uh, what the program we used, <laughs> so all we did was just, uh, we didn't loop it, but we pit it so it repeats back and forth. But our programmer didn't loop it, so it can you know keep on doing. It, so we had to keep on shutting it off. Okay. Anything else? No. All right. Thank you. My name's Nathan. I'm McKenna. Hi. Our mechanism is a crank designer. It is used for the wheels of chains and for internal combustion. And the internal motion is is rotating because it rotates, and the output uh, motion is. Reciprocating because it goes back and forth. The flow of power is not reversible, however, the direction of power is reversible. Meaning that this can go clockwise and counterclockwise, but I cannot have this make this one move to make this one move. The ratio is one to one, which means that neither the torque or acceleration is increased or decreased. And an example of this is the wheels of a train. Excellent. Thank you. My name is Chan. I'm Zach. Uh, I'm Xavier. And I'm Mike. This uh, mechanism is the rock companion. Um, it is used to change or in cars and trucks the steer. The pinion right here is connected to the steering wheel and the linear motion is connected to the tire rod and it may right there and then the pinion and then the rack. It, Steer. Um, the input motion is rotary, which is the gears making the racks um, move back and forth. The output of this, the output motion is linear. This is moving side to side, which makes it linear. Um, the flow, the reversible, uh, is the flow is reversible because you can move the uh, the pinion back and forth. So, in the direction of the um, uh, the direction is reversed because you can move the, the rack back and forth. The torque and the acceleration is, can neither be increased or better torque or uh, even if you put a bigger gear on there, it would be faster, and, yeah. All right, is that it? I'm Sophia. I'm Tyler. And a sour mechanism. Our mechanism is called the crank and slide ball. It can also be used on a steam train, right here, and uh, pistons, and it can also be used to lower and raise car windows. Um, the input motion right here is the green crank because it spins in a circular rotation uh, motion, so it'd be rotary. The output motion is reciprocating because it moves the slider moves back and forth. The flow the flow of power is not re reversible because yeah right here so uh, because it only comes from this motor, from this motor. The direction of power is reversible because we can start it and it moves that way, and then we can stop it and it moves that way. Opposite Yeah. The torque stays the same because the motor doesn't speed the crank faster or slower. It stays the same speed the whole time. And then even when you go the opposite way. And uh, the acceleration also stays the same because it doesn't change speed, because it's been programmed at the same um, speed both ways. So it goes that way, 
And then when you go that way, it's the exact same way. And that's our crank and slider. So when you push the button, it goes from right to left, and push again and it stops, push again it goes from left to right, push again and it stops, and that's repeated forever. The flow of power is from the motor into this gear, and then out from that gear. Is uh, it reversible? It, yes. And it is reversible. Uh, this gear is the input gear, and this foot is the output gear. And from this gear to this gear, the speed is increased and the torque is decreased. The advantage of the chain drive is the torque and speed over long distances. The shaft direction is the same. The angle of the chain drive is parallel. The ratio from the small gear to the big gear is 3 to 5. And from the small gear to the big gear, the speed is decreased and the torque is increased. Um, our mechanism can be found in motorcycles and bicycles. Um, like in this picture, for the bike, uh, that would be the output gear and that would be the input gear. And same for the dirt bike. Alright, is that it? Yep. Great, thank you. I'm Thomas. I'm Sander. I'm the gear train, the gear train is used for the rotary motion. These do want this clockwork, soon to see some motors. The input and output motors are both rotary. On this, on this one, <laughs> the speed is consistent. On this one, the speed is increased. On this one, the torque is consistent. On this one, torque is increased, decreased. On this one, the ratio is one to one, and on this one, the ratio is 36 to 60 t, which is which is three to five. So the flow of power uh, for both of these is reversed, and the gear direction is both opposite, which basically means the flow of direction basically means which way the uh, driver gear goes or whether it can be reversed or not, I guess. And then, <coughs> uh, gear direction basically means which, um, the comparison between the two gears. So, showing this off. Okay, so right here. And it's also reversible. And then over here. is constant, the torque is constant, and the ratio is 1 to 1. Uh, the flow of motion for this is just the same, reversible. Uh, the input and output gears, um, they both go in the same direction because of what is known as the idle gear, which is right here. Meaning okay, can you show us? Okay. I'm Matt. I'm Aiden. I'm Paige. And this is the Cameron Fall. It is found in car parts and motors, including well, the IC engine or in some toys like the duck woman. But there's Turn it around. Camera, there's the camera follower, and then the rotating camera loop moves the duck up and down. Cool. It's like when you go in a gift shop or something. Anyway, so the input is rotary, the output is reciprocating. So. to a point where it couldn't go anymore, it just stopped. 
and it's called the cam and follower because this is the cam and when you push the button it just spins around and the follower all it all it does is it literally follows um wherever the cam goes and falls down on the drop and that's why it's called the cam. excellent thank you